Hi everyone, and welcome to Power Plays. I'm Harry, and today I'm going to be giving you my top five tips to smashing every single hospital, getting three stars, and hey, even getting to wave 47 on Topless Mountain. So, if you find any of these useful, do make sure to su subscribe to the channel. Do make sure to like the videos and comment down below. What are your own tips? What is your essential things for every hospital? Now, the first thing, the very first thing I do in every hospital is I go to the overview tab, I go to policy, and I make sure that fast track decision making is turned on too many people I see play without this tick and it's because they don't use the overview tab and uh, the overview page and I get it there's a lot going on policy is definitely one that you need to look at and fast track decision fast track treatment decision making is one to tick what this does is that when a patient hits your diagnosis threshold for treatment they do not need to go back to the GP office to go straight for treatment because what would happen is they would go diagnosis so GP, psychiatry, you know, GP, ward. Oh, they've now hit the threshold. Let's go back to the GP office just to get told to go straight to treatment. What that does is it just builds up more and more queues in your GP office, and you do not need those queues. We're gonna get massive queues as it is. I'm just gonna let this play in the background, why not? We're gonna have massive queues as it is, so we do not need any more. So get that ticked get that straight away. I also tick promote staff automatically just because it's one less thing to worry about and my diagnosis for threshold my diagnosis threshold for treatment is usually 8%, 85% early game and then depending on the hospital I'll whack it all the way up to 100%. Um, that's because this acts as a hard cap for um, what your treatment success rate is going to be. If you're having a hospital with cure rates on I recommend having this as high as possible. So 100% definitely recommend that. Let me keep this at 90 for now, see how it goes. I've got to have a, a, a cure rate of 70% and you can see here already I was at 79% so happy with that. Tip number two is only build what you need at the start. Too many people I see want to build one of every single room. I just want to build one of every single room. And what that ends up doing is um, that just ends up you running out of money, uh, your hospital level going too high and you can't cope with the, the amount of patients. Just, I just don't recommend it. Only build what you need. At the start, you need a reception desk. You need a GP office, toilet, staff room, training room, and a ward. They're the main things that I would build. Make sure you've got a bit of money in your pocket because then when um, more uh, patients come and they need treatment, extra treatment that isn't in the ward, you can then build your pharmacy, you can build your psychiatry, etc, etc. Only build what you need, um, otherwise you're going to end up running in debt really quickly, spending a lot of money, especially since some of these template rooms that I suggest, you know, they're not cheap. So I definitely, definitely recommend doing that. And on the templates, I recommend min-maxing them as much as possible. I know it doesn't look pretty. Uh, and personally, when I play on some sandbox modes, I, I don't make them look like this. Um, but if you want to maximize your chances as much as possible, if you want doctors with stats of like 200% diagnosis skills, make sure you're putting in these medicine cabinets, make sure you're putting in the uh, you know the deep thing twos if you've got them unlocked more medicine cabinets medicine cabinets you can see medicine cabinets everywhere this is absolute chaos uh, this would probably be moved backwards but ah well um you know you can see deep things <laughs> i really didn't care about this surgery it seems uh, this is not a bit this is not a hospital that i use for a guide as you can tell uh, anyway 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 um, I definitely recommend min maxing these rooms. It's going to help get these patients through as quickly as possible. All right, tip number three, staff. <laughs> staff is very, very important. You want to make sure that you've got 
different staff for different rooms. You want to specialize these staff and you, you just want to train them in, in a certain way. Uh, again, I've not used this hostel for a guy, so some of these staff might be a bit all over the place. But I always recommend um, you know, assigning staff to certain rooms. Um, you know, making sure that your GPs are only working in the GP office, psychiatry only in psychiatry, your treatment only in treatment, etc, etc. Make sure that you've got all these tags, um, so like for this one, only in the surgery. Um, I originally had them going everywhere because I wanted to get them to a level 5 surgeon. If you want to train people up quicker, stick them in the GP office. Um, anyway, yeah. Have these staff specialised, have them. Um, I've got a completely um, another guide on staff training. Do make sure you check that out. It's going to be really useful. It's going to tell you exactly why I train them, how I do, and why I have them the levels that I have them. Now, early game, don't be afraid to hire some staff members. That's, say, like, for example, this staff member, early game. It's a good... It's a, do you know what? This is a great staff member to have. Not only if they've got the... They're very cheap. Um, although they're not that cheap, they'll be expensive. But look, they could do teaching masterclass, right? And they can train GPs, psychiatrists, uh, DNA doctors, and research. I mean, not that you need research that much, but they could train them all, and they could train them quickly, and that's exactly what you want. Um, so don't be afraid uh, just to hire just anyone at the start, uh, but you do want to make sure that over time, your staff menu looks a lot like this. This is wonderful. Makes me very, very happy. Um, you can have your last one. You don't have to have it at stamina training. I've got it at stamina training for topless mountain purely because I want to keep them on uh, working as long as possible during these waves. Uh, but personally, uh, on other levels, I would have emotional intelligence or I would have bedside manner. Either work. So like, for example, all of these, uh, all of these two treatments, it would be great to have emotional intelligence. And then this one GP, I would personally recommend having GPs at uh, five GP practice. And we might as well do it a research while we're here. So that brings me on to tip number four. Map out your hospital. Think of the patient path. You don't want patients going to the reception desk, walking all the way over here to go to the GP office, all the way back to the psychiatry, all the way back to the GP office, then going all the way to treatment over here. You don't want that to happen. What you want is you want short paths for patients to walk. So you can see here, they go to the reception desk, GP office just here, psychiatry just here, ward just here. All my diagnosis rooms are usually in the same building. Quick paths, again, down here. This is another diagnosis building. Reception desk, GP office, psychiatry, ward. They can move really, 52 in a row, it's just, we're doing all right here. Um, a lot of sick everywhere though. We're going to have to get that cleaned up. Um, but you can see all these paths really quick, really short. It's going to get that diagnosis speed up, 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 up. Um, then they can go treatment. And treatment can be in another building. Can be another building. No problem whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, do think of your um, treatment paths. And then five... Um, training and I guess I kind of covered that in, um, in in your staff so maybe you know, I'll give you a bonus tip after but always continually train your staff do not let it slip you want to be training 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 you want to make sure that you're getting your staff specialized and getting them trained as quickly as possible I personally recommend training staff when they're on low energy because you actually get an energy boost from training so why waste a high energy um, uh, opportunity? Essentially, why put a, a high energy staff member in a training room because they're not going to gain energy in there. They're just going to sit there and then they're going to go out to work. When you could put them to work, wait until they're drained, put them in there rather than the break room and then off you go. So my bonus, bonus tip is going to be prices. So I never, 
and RP never, pretty much, <laughs> never have money issues um, in this game. Never have money issues in the game. And the reason why I never have money issues in the game is because I have um, my prices set here. So I get 100% on treatment and minus 20% on diagnosis. But you could go all the way to minus 100%. So you can see 66, or oh, minus 80%, sorry, 66 there, but minus 20 is 264. It, it's not gonna really have that much of a difference. It's not gonna break the bank. Uh, so I would definitely recommend um, setting your prices at minus, uh, plus 100 and minus 20. Now you can only have your um, you can only have your treatment prices at plus 100 if you're keeping your patients happy. Patients will not pay that extra amount if they're at less than 50 percent. Um, if they're at less than 50 percent happiness, they they purely won't pay it. Um, do I have an example? You. You are at 31, 30%. So there's a high chance that this person's not going to pay. Um, let's just check. Refuse to pay. Exactly. Um, so the reason why I have my diagnosis, again, my, I have my diagnosis at minus 20. So you can see they got a happiness boost because they're paying less. And if you had it at minus 80, that boost would be even higher. So if you go to prices, Minus 80, minus 80, and you might not want to do this too early game, but you can see uh, it's really going to help with the happiness levels. Um, so you can see we've got a 52% here, it goes down quite quick. I do not think this patient will pay, uh, and the reason is because is they're already dipping below 50, and, and I find that if they're below 50, that they're just they're not really going to pay. Um, so let's, let's just have a quick look, you can see it's going down quite quickly, uh, they have paid, so Fantastic. Usually around below 50, there's a high chance they're not going to pay. Um, so it's one to look out for. You want to do everything you can to keep the patients happy. And um, having your diagnosis uh, prices so low is, is really going to help with that. And there you go. They are my top five, and my extra bonus tip, uh, on, uh, on two point hospital and how to run successful hospitals. I mean, way 48 on top of this mountain is... Um, it's no easy achievement, trust me. Uh, so, yeah, if you follow those tips, you'll be smashing through each and every hospital in no time. I promise. Well, thanks for watching. Again, if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel. You'll be turn the notifications on, get notified, because soon, maybe if you're watching it in the future, then um, it's going to be now. But soon, uh, I'm going to be putting out 2.2 campus videos which i cannot wait for you guys to see um cannot wait uh, so yeah do subscribe to the channel like the videos and comment down below what are your top five tips in two point hospital thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next episode bye for now